Welcome back. We continue our introduction to the RTC, and now that we've covered the most important parts of the hardware, let's move on to the software. There are two ways to use peripherals in the STM32 development environment. One access is through a low-level application programming interface, and the other is through a high-level hardware abstraction layer called AJL. You can choose between the two APIs in the project manager slash advanced settings menu. In the fifth chapter of the curriculum, we were introduced to the HAL library and the previous examples were based on it, so the use of RTC is demonstrated here through the HAL drivers. Before describing a specific function cause, let's look at how to configure the RTC peripheral. To do this, let's import the project that belongs to this chapter. Let's have a look at what we can set. In the cube MX view, you'll find the settings for the real-time clock in the section of timers. Checking the activate clock source checkbox will activate the RTC, which in practice means that cube MX will generate code for the RTC from now on. The generated codes during save are, by default, stored in a single file as explained in chapter 4, which is not the most elegant solution, so it's worthwhile to make the settings explained here. The next setting is activate calendar, which if selected, will start with a predefined value for the calendar and the clock, which can be set in the parameter settings tab within the calendar time and calendar date drop-down sections. If you want to set an alarm, you must select either internal alarm or route it to AF1 from the alarm A or alarm B drop-down menus. A and B are two separate channels, they can operate independently of each other. Of the two options, internal indicates an internal alarm and routed indicates that it has been routed to an external leg, in this case RTC AF1. Unfortunately, there is sometimes a difference between the names of the cube MX and the datasheet. The latter refers to the same pin as RTC out. In our case, this leg is the seventh in order and is 13 of port C, so it's the leg PC13. If you want to use the alarm in interrupt mode, it must be enabled separately under the NVIC setting tab. Interrupt mode means that we do not need to continuously pull the alarm status because at the time set, the interrupt handler function HAL RTC alarm IRQ handler is called suspending the currently executed task. By itself, it only handles the registers associated with the interrupt, but it calls one of the functions hell RTC alarm A event callback or hell RTC EX alarm B event callback, depending on the channel. Their contents are arbitrary and it's up to the user to write. Basically, the interrupt mode is good for receiving notification of an alarm. The wake up function is similar to an alarm, but more like a classic timer. It can be used to wake up the controller after a certain amount of time has elapsed, but unlike the alarm, the time is not given in hours, minutes and seconds, but a counter is defined by specifying a value and a time base. The value can be a 32-bit number that defines when the wake-up should occur, and the time base is the length of the steps, which is derived from dividing the RTC peripheral's base clock, and can be 16, 8, 4, 2, or 1 Hz. Now that we have seen what opportunities we have for the settings, let's see how library functions can be used to access each function. Now I'll describe the most commonly used functions, which you will also see in our example program. First, the HAL RTC init function. Its purpose is to wake up and reset the RTC periphery. Cube MX takes care of calling it correctly, we don't have to do more with it. Its parameter is the age RTC, this is a pointer for the configuration settings of the RTC. The getTime function is polling the time. Its parameters are the age RTC, 
s time, which is a pointer to a time structure, and the format that specifies the time format, which can be either RTC format bin or RTC format BCD. Bin means binary, and BCD is a binary coded decimal number where two decimal digits are stored in one byte. For illustration, noon as the 12th hour in binary format can be written as hexa C, whereas in BCD format, where each digit is represented using four bits, it is written as hexa 12. The getDate function is polling the date. Its parameters are the HRTC and the SDate, this is a pointer to a date structure, and the format, same as the previous. This function can only be called immediately after the HAL RTC get time. This is because the call to HAL RTC get time blocks the registers that store a temporary copy of the date and HAL RTC get date releases them, which is necessary so that the time and date can form a coherent pair of values. The point is that you should always retrieve the time and date in pairs, respecting the order. In technical terms, this is known as leaky abstraction, which is a bug in higher level APIs. The date and time query functions should completely hide the register level from us, but that's not happening. The getAlarm function queries the alarm time which has been set. Its parameters are the HRTC, the S alarm, this points to an alarm structure, the alarm, where you can specify which of the two channels to request. Its value can be either RTC alarm A or RTC alarm B. One more parameter is the format, which of course specifies the format and can be RTC format bin or RTC format BCD as previously. Our next function is the set time function. This of course is setting the time. Its parameters are similar to the previous functions, HRTC, the S time, which is a pointer to a time structure, and the format as discussed previously. The set date function is for setting the date. Its parameters are very similar to the previous one. The set alarm IT is setting the alarm in interrupt mode. The parameters are those already described. The deactivate alarm is turning off the alarm. The parameters for this are similar to the previous ones. The alarm IRQ handler function handles the alarm interrupt request. When the alarm time comes, the control jumps to this function and the other operation currently being performed is aborted. When the function returns, the control returns to the interrupted code section. The alarm A event callback function handles interrupts for the A alarm channel. This function shall be defined by the user. Its content is arbitrary. Its parameter is the HRTC. The RTCX backup read function is that the RTC also has 20 backup registers, which can be used to write any information and retain their contents as long as there is a backup power supply. This function can read one of these registers. Its parameters are the HRTC and the backup register, which is a number of the address register from 0 to 19. The backup write function only differs from the read function in that it does not read but write the given register. Its parameters are the HRTC, the backup register, its value can be 0 to 19, and the data which is to be written in the register. A complete list and description of the APIs can be found in the UM1725 user documentation available on the internet. We have reached the end of this video. In the next part, we will show you an example application, which is none other than an alarm clock. Through the application, in addition to the practical use of the RTC, you will also be introduced to the state machine a very commonly used tool. See you in the next video. Bye. Bye.